order. Public comment for items not on the agenda. Addition to changes to the agenda. Any of the above? Okay, mm -hmm. done. Silence. So Toby, how's it going? It's a uh, nice spring day today. Maple syrup was running. Mud season. Mud yeah. season starting. Thank you. <clears throat> yep, it's going good. Um, so municipal roads general permits. What do I do with that stuff? I don't know. Um, why is everything upside down? In China. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so the municipal roads general permit standards need to be added to the existing road and bridge standards, correct? So the state redid their version of the road and bridge standards. Okay. And they required as part of the acceptance of that to declare how you handle MRGP segments in your town. Mm -hmm. And so essentially the whole the whole document essentially says you choose you either say yes, yes, yes to everything or you say yes, no, yes, no, mm -hmm. depending on what your town standards want to be. Mm -hmm. The minimum standard is any segment that is hydraulically connected has to be rated at this MRGP standard. Mm -hmm. So you can choose the rest of the roads to not be brought up to that same standard if you so choose. How do they again do they define the hydraulically connected? Is everything within hundred feet? Oh, hundred feet. Within mm -hmm. hundred feet. Um, and there are some that are plus or minus, and they roll them in or don't roll them in. But essentially, they have an inventory. We've done the inventory in town. Right. Yeah. So All the yeah, segments are there. Yeah. And each one that's hydraulically connected needs to meet this standard that the state is is saying that we need to meet. Okay. And that's what this document is. So if you decide to follow the state regulation, then you have to adopt this in order to get the 10% in town grants, in FEMA, and ERAF monies. Right, if we have a disaster or something like that, we right. want to be so, more protected so, than class. So also class two and structure grants, you lose 10% if you don't adopt these. Okay. So you, you also have your own standards. Right. So this would supersede your standards. These would no okay, longer be in effect. Standard conflict. I guess, right. So, you know, essentially you can adopt these. For the most part, they're almost identical to the standards we have. You know, slopes and ditches and all that kind of stuff. It's really pretty much what's already here, except for trees and policies and roads named size and stuff. Yeah. So so this has all of the standard in it that's in this for the most part. Mm -hmm. We could, you we could, could adopt, adopt this that. as a policy. We could adopt that as an appendage to that and whatever, and that's newer in time, whatever it is in conflict that over, that supersedes, right? Well, I, I guess, I don't know. Legally, you'd have, to, you'd have to meet this standard. Yeah. And I'm not sure what you can do with this, whether yeah. it still exists or it doesn't yeah. exist. I mean, that's your legal, uh, yeah. that's a legal question, but if you adopt this standard, you can't have this standard standing, they can't stand next to each other. But so we could it. say we still want to go by. You can still say this is a town policy. You mm -hmm. can adopt this as a policy, saying we want to enforce our standards with this policy, but you'd have to adopt this as a policy, not a standard. So well, believe, but, that, but again, that, you have to generate. What happened to that waiver we were granted from? Well, the last time there was, there was a stand, set of standards, and we said we wanted to. Well, because ours are more, were more strict. Right, we wanted to augment. Right, what but, was, but yeah. now they've added this municipal roads general permit stuff. Right, well, that's so They just was. revised everything. So in this new revision, we do have a choice that we could uh, eventually, or we're past the deadline. Right. You know, well, if we wanted to well, develop our own I, I calendar. The deadline right? was July, last July. Oh. But so I, I we, we're, already, we're already behind the eight ball if oh. we don't adopt state version. Okay. But we could still, at some point, adopt new standards to include the municipal roads general permit. Yeah. If you remember, when we did these, the trans um, reviewed them and said yeah, they were fine. Right. They exceeded their standard right. at the time. So. That's right. Well, they may have exceeded, and actually, we had to change a few things in this 
in yeah. order to get the state to approve it. Right, that's right. Because right. our culvert sizes were not uh, acceptable. Ah, they were in undersized. The in the original ah. uh, roads committee. Mm -hmm. So, good memory there. Yeah, that'd be five yeah. years ago. Well, I was working on all of that. So, and it, anyway, so my suggestion is is that you you take this document and adopt it. It's pretty much all the standards we already have for ditching and slope and drainage and all the rest, and it meets the state standard. And then you can take your time to say, okay, how much of this do we want to either engage as an appendix or engage as a policy? And you know, this is the procedure we would use to meet these standards. Then essentially every year you just have to sign this document because it's, it is the, it's the- It's only good for one year? Yeah, I think you have to do it every year. I, I didn't realize you did, but I think you have to. And anyways, you need to do it this time because it's a new standard right. that everybody's And we're ready. out of compliance, right. so to speak. Right. So something for the to-do list would be to review the town's road and bridge standards in comparison with the updated state standards and see what we might want to adopt as town policy. Mm -hmm. So there's there's some numbers written in here. Did you put them in? I did. Yeah. This is one blank still. The million uh, minimum fifteen blank inches on top. Oh. Must be soil. Hey, you need it. Oh no, this is cheddar. Oh. You know what the number should be? Yes. Three inches. It's what's in our standard already. Oh, okay. So do we? Do we all sign it or? Data. Yeah, there's a, there's a signed signature page and a yeah. date. So you just have to date that document, sign it, and then we'd have to send an electronic copy to Shauna. So then it's then registered to the state that you've adopted the state standard. Right, yeah. I you asked. also have to, at the first page, you have to say yes to the ones that are required, which are, I think, the first two. Mm -hmm. But you can say yes to all of them if you want to say yes to, uh, there's a guardrail standard, there's a um, driveway standard. Um, and there's a water quality standard. And we already have all of those things that we follow, so my suggestion is to do all the yeses. Yeah. So do just, yes to all of them? Yeah, just say yes to everything. That's that's a question. Okay. Yeah, I talked to, well, I emailed with Shauna, and I guess my understanding, I thought the way to do it was I would scan it and email it to her. Is that the right way? Yep. Yeah, I don't want us to rescind our policy. No. Um, that, that we'll adopt this and then um, maintain right. whatever th there is right. in addition. So to I, I guess for the... Is that, a motion? Is that a motion? Yeah, I would move that we adopt the uh, town and bridge road standards for town of Callis, dated, first dated June 5th, 2019, with the additions in blank set. Toby has indicated okay. for uh, the, the state road and bridge standards. Yes. State road and bridge standards, right? Uh, no, it says Miss Pally of Cows. State road road and bridge standards. Miss Pally of for Cowles. the town of Cows, yeah. and that these would be in addition to, we're not in conflict to our existing town Cows road and bridge standards. We would okay. review against both of those standards. All right, I'll second that. And in the minutes, we could put that we're going to see about looking at our current standards and check them against these. Yeah. Yeah. All right. um, so it needs to be dated on the front page. There's a date of, of adoption. Okay, 224. And then I think the signature, the second page is the signature page. And, and you're recommending hydrologic connected road segments? Yes, on everything. It's what we're already doing. Intermittent jumping. stream crossing, construction standards, guardrails, driveway. What are we doing? Right. Right. All right. And I'm going to date it again, and then I'm going to send it around for. Mm -hmm. Signature after we vote on it. All right, everybody all set? All mm -hmm. those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, hearing none. John, so the only thing I'd suggest is you get a clarification on how you can meld the old standards into the new document. 
for well, the, the, the these, these would be the standards, right? And then anything that we have that's over and above, we would also employ those. Right. We Whether it's a standard or a policy or an yeah, or, or yeah. A, an explanation right. of I, I just yeah. um, make yeah. sure that you understand what that what this then becomes. Right. Right. It's not the standard because you just adopted a different standard. Right. So well, no. this, I'm suggesting we have two sets of standards. One one is the yeah. state standard, and then we have a. A town standard. That's uh, that's an addition. I guess I just don't, we're not. In I don't conflict. know if that can exist in that. In oh that really? Way. So yeah. I would check to make sure that you can't have okay. two standards. And which one? Do, which one do I? Well, follow? for instance, we have a standard that says uh, non-galvanized guardrails. Mm -hmm. um, that would continue to be our standard. Um, but standard we, or policy? Yeah, uh, yeah, well, whatever. I just make well, sure we'll make sure, make sure it's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. However, you you want. Yeah, that's right. right. We, don't want, we don't want to make things more problematic. Okay. Right. Well, we also don't want to make it so that the stuff that we worked hard on to change right. isn't followed. Right. Well, we don't. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we're already following it. I mean, it's uh -huh. the way we work. Um, right. So it's not. That's not going to change just because there's a different state standard. So. All right, so any other update on um, road stuff? So Sandra had given me a copy of the latest budget for the highway. Mm -hmm. We look like we're in great shape, one hundred and fifty to $170,000 left. I still have a $25,000 okay. reimbursement coming mm -hmm. for the paving on Moscow Woods Road, so there's money coming in. Yeah. Um, we look to be nothing too unusual. And you're all set with the budget for town meeting for highway? Sure. If anybody has questions or... Mrs. General. Whatever. No, that's. Yeah, you'll be there. Yep. Yeah, that's your general. So I did. I was Fine. reviewing the orders. I always look at the time cards. Do you get this or do you get this? I get it. I'll get it to Sandra. I mean, I'll get it to sure. Shauna, and then I'll leave the original here. Sure. So I was trying to understand on the time <coughs> cards some of the codes um the week of february 3rd jacob had 22 hours of vp time what is that vacation pay vacation pay oh that's vacation and sp for bruce what is sp sick pay Thank you, because I didn't have any clue. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I was thinking, I wonder what that, what that is. OT, it's overtime. Yeah, I got that. Ours, Ours regular, regular time. time. <laughs> yeah, I got that. It was just the SP wow. and the VP. I wasn't sure. It was Learn like, something new every day. Vice President. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, OK, thanks for that. Um, and all the trucks are running good. Mm -hmm. No breakdowns. Um, actually, we have loaned a truck to East Montpelier. One of their trucks is down, so they have they have floppy for a few days. And still, oh, it's still there. So. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we are, we are using mutual aid yeah. between towns. That's good. And why is that called floppy? Is it because it's rolled over twice? Oh, that one. Oh, is that a spare? Yeah. Oh, okay. Floppy. I think I'm going to name this John Floppy. There you go. I thought you were going to tell me the fenders are rotted out and they're doing this. No. Nope. I hope not. Yeah. I've had a couple of turns to the side. So we're having internet issues still, I take it. We are. So we can't call up anything on the no, screen. Really? Oh, good. I'm not sure why. Did you guys have internet issues today? I was. I had a VP day today. I had a vacation day today. Oh. I wasn't in the office. Um, huh. Odd, isn't it? So, so the only other thing when you look at the the highway budgets, um, sometimes the reimbursement does not fall into the year of the of the expense. So that's one of those things you have to sort of pay attention to because the, there may be a plus or minus in income on budget. Uh, like right now, we did the paving on Moscow Woods in the fall, and I will get a reimbursement for the end of the year, so that'll fall in one year and the expenses will be in the same year as the income because the reimbursement. So it'll be in the same fiscal year? It'll same. So yeah. that'll, you know, essentially the 22,000 will be offset by 22,000. It won't affect the bottom line. Okay. 
But in other cases, so we have a George Road project that's probably going to start in the spring, but then we'll jump into reimbursement in the fall. So essentially $150,000 may end up being expended without any monies coming in to pay for it. It'll come out. So the budget may look like it's running off a little bit in the summertime because those expenses will come in and then the next fiscal year will happen and the reimbursement won't come till then. Okay. So just so you understand, that's how those, those grants. Why is it that much of a lag? It all depends on when you do the job and when you can put it in. And so essentially, oh, okay. we do. You know, we don't put job jobs out in the middle of December and no. in December to no. yeah. get it done. So it'll be in the spring and probably won't be finished before the next fiscal year starts. Oh, right, 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 right. July one is, yes. is got the cutoff. Got it. Got it. Right. So just understand that sometimes there will, it's not a cash flow issue, it's just going to be the budget will look like it's over for a, a period of time until mm -hmm. all of a sudden this reimbursement check comes in. Mm -hmm. And it's just a timing frame that sometimes it jumps between fiscal years. So this, is, so this is more or less the, through the end of February, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. And we're at almost 70% of highway wages and we have March, April, May, June, four more months to go. <clears throat> but Fine. winter is when we burn down. So. Right. Right. So there's a lot of overtime in there right now. Yeah. And essentially, the next four months will be very little overtime. So essentially, Hopefully. you know, it'll, it'll yeah. look done on bed. That will, that will throw yeah. something off. What season's starting? Yeah. I know. As of today, what season started? Yeah. Or yesterday, I forget which one. And in some cases, like insurance insurance line items, sometimes there's a one year, one time payment. So that throws it off. It's like at 100% now. But it's never going to be more than 100% because that's the last payment. So mm -hmm. those things that may look out of line right now are not necessarily out of line. It's all when they get paid in the yeah. cycle. And some, same thing with some of the capital payments for trucks or, or you know, come when they're due. Right. Not necessarily in, a, in, in the time of year where it's 60 or 70% that you expect to have been yeah. spent. Expended. So we're at 66. The, uh, February is at a 66 percent point in the budget. So when you're looking at those mm -hmm. percentages, he, the highway wages are running over budget. But again, it, we don't spend one twelfth of the budget every month, and mm -hmm. there's this front loading of the overtime. Right. Well, if you look at the bottom line, we're at 70. Well, I might as well say 78 percent. Right. So that's about right. Right, this but also time. understand that the 22000 that was expended on Moscow Woods doesn't show the reimbursement there. So, right. so you need to take 20, essentially. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to get down to about 74% of, of total. Yeah, and some of those other items that are 100% are running that, that percentage up because you've already paid 100% of insurance and you've paid 100% of other things. So. And does George Road grant, is that the one we didn't get? No, we got it. We're just waiting to, to deal with it. Oh, okay. We got the money. We're just waiting till the, for the better weather. We don't have the money. We got the grant. Right. Cool. So we, we got, got approved to, to spend the money, and then it's a reimbursement. All state grants right. are reimbursements. Right. Got it. So it comes out of our pocket, but then gets reimbursed. Okay. I had um, a couple things I just wanted to say. Um, when we were away, of course, my son Brian was at my house. When we came home, he showed us a leaf, I think it's a leaf spring or a coil spring that broke off of someone's vehicle. It was at the top of Lightning Ridge, so it's in my breezeway. It and like this, that's yeah, a coil it's a spring. coil spring, yeah, it's broke. Um, there's some real big moguls on Lightning Ridge, mm -hmm. and he suggested um, that I say, wonder if the road grader could come out mm -hmm. and do that. And the banks need to all get pushed back. Guess what we did today? Yeah. Did you we, do it on Lightning Ridge? No. I haven't been home yet. We can do it tomorrow. Yeah. Um, we so start, yeah, banks. we started pushing banks. Yep. In places where there is really rough, a lot of the rough is was in the snow and ice because people going up a hill. Would, yeah. It's yep. just like gravel in the gravel season. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we've already done once where we hit the hills that were bad, oh, so we can do it again. Um, Thank I'll you. I'll get the next couple of days to go ahead and, and chase Thank those you. down. So is the culvert blocked on the, as you're coming onto Moscow Woods right there by the old mill, is the culvert there blocked? Because I went through there yesterday and there's like pretty deep standing water, so I didn't know. I think oh, that's the, the, I think yeah. that's the yeah. snow. We cleared, we cleared that off today with a oh, bucket loader. Yeah. I think that's just the snow that was there that melted and 
has no no place to go. Right. Well, isn't it that? All, and it's all cleared off now. And that's part of the road erosion project for that area. No. That little bridge. No, we resurfaced that, and that's right. Yeah. Okay. It's just a, you know it's a factor of there's no place for the water to drain off because there's a curb on either side. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, I, I, just, I, thought talking, I thought you're talking about a post office. No, I was talking about that little bridge there. Uh, right by the mill. Yeah, right. as okay. you just come off of 14. I, mean, I thought maybe there was a culvert there that was blocked or something. Nope. No. Okay. No, there's a big culvert underneath it. The whole pond drains underneath it. <laughs> if that gets blocked, uh, call FEMA. Good yeah, <laughs> thing we just signed these. <laughs> when do um, the posted signs go up? When do the roads usually get posted? Uh, it's usually the first part of March. Okay. I did see a 10 wheeler on dirt roads in East Montpelier today. Yeah. Well, all the all the logging uh -huh. trucks are trying their best to get everything out of town by the early part of March. Right. Thank so, anything you. else on <coughs> on my way? <coughs> mm -hmm. Thank right. you. Thank you, Toby. Yeah. Thank you. Um. All right. Yeah, like I said, we can't call anything up on the screen for anybody to see. We've got paper. Do you want me to just? jump right into February. Yeah, I just did. Yeah, because you were here last time we did the other, so. Right, so just to go back a little bit, January, there is a January report. <coughs> you have that in your hands. I think mm -hmm. the yep. uh, most important part of that would be uh, to talk about the um, delinquent tax report. It is attached. I did make copies of those. Um, so we are. Uh, 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 hang on one quick second. We have collected sixty-five thousand dollars plus so far in uh, 2019 delinquent taxes uh, of the one hundred ninety thousand dollars that is outstanding and <coughs> the money is coming in and why that is important and why I wanted to just go rewind back to that particular section of the January report is um, when we look at where we are in February our, we have a revenue um, essentially a revenue shortfall of $156,000 and mostly that is mostly all in fact it is all delinquent taxes so the rule of thumb is whether or not your expenses are on target or even under budget if you did not collect the revenues equal to what you have spent, then you end the year in a loss, mm -hmm. and your general fund then has to cover for it and is depleted by that. So moving on to the expenses, I have annotated each section of the expense um, sheet or the budget to actual for February. And it is six pages long, mm -hmm. and at the top it says general fund. Mm -hmm. So our select board budget is, is actually on target as long as we pretty as long as we stay within our budgeted amounts, we're going to be fine. The grant matches are okay, on. So you're on page page two. two. Yes, grant matches are at 100%, they're not going to increase. Town clerk salaries, they're a titch over budget, but they're, the election pressures mm -hmm. on those salaries are what you see that has mm -hmm. inflated them. So it, that is what is to be expected. The Lister's budget is likely to be at or under budget by the end of the year. Town Treasurer is likely to be at budget at the end of the year. The audit, audit is going to be at or under budget. Uh, and it is likely to be under budget actually because we're just, we're really getting very smooth with Nimrick now doing our monthly audits. And um, yeah, that's it's, working out pretty well, isn't it? It really is. It, it get, it, there was a lag in uh, the December, January um, yeah, they were busy. audits. They were busy. We yeah. were really busy. But going forward, uh, the rest of the months of the year should should be really smooth and mm -hmm. timely. Good. 
tax collector is going to be at budget. Elections are going to be at budget. General office, it's a little bit over right now, and it could go over by the fiscal year, maybe by a couple of thousand dollars. And, and computer stuff or what? Perry as well. Yeah. Telephone and internet. Uh, postage is possible to go up. Uh, supplies. You know, these are these are the numbers that continue to need to be spent, mm -hmm. um, and we're we're over budget on mm -hmm. those items. But again, I don't see this as anything critical. Why is heat and electric so low uh, as compared to budget at this point? I can't really say either we, we have heavy higher bills to come and I imagine that we do for February and March and then they're, it's going to slow down. Does the town hall, is it on the same bill as the town office? No. It'll be separate? It's separate. Okay. Uh, payroll taxes and benefits, they're going to be a little bit over budget and that's Primarily driven by your salaried employees, right. in particular, right. so in the town clerk's side. So if we go up or um, over a little bit on the salary, but everything else is going to go up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, taxes, dues, and assessment—they're—they're they're not going to go up. They're right. a little under budget. Zoning administration is likely to be at budget. Fire and ambulance is likely to be at budget. Uh, we have one more payment to make on that. And why are we? So we have one more payment to make to East Montpelier. Mm -hmm. And one more to Woodbury? Why? Wood, Woodbury's only at 80%. Do we owe them anything? Mm. Yes, there will be one more payment. Okay. They're paid quarterly, so the next payment will be due April 1st. Okay. Uh, police patrol, we're over. We may very well go over, but we're talking hundreds of dollars, not thousands of dollars. Right. Yeah. Animal control, it looks like we're going to be under budget, but if it's a number of, if we can't, we do not know, it's a, it's a complete guess if animals are turned over to the ASPCA, right. then you mean that, the, Central Vermont the Central Vermont Humane Society, then that, you'll see expenses in that line item go up. Um, Planning Commission is an interesting line, a line item or group of line items. Is they're only at three tenths of their budget at this time, right? And so we you know we want to keep an eye on that particular cluster of uh, budgeted items. Maybe maybe we're over budget. Maybe we're over budgeting and there. And I don't take a look at it for the no, next. I don't couple think of so. Years. I think it's going to ramp up because they're doing Shoreland and they're going to be having public meetings and they're going to need Katie's um, help. So I, I think I think that before the end of the fiscal year they will spend most of this. Just just something to be to yeah. look at and no. be aware of. You're right. Conservation that. fund, that's at budget. That's not likely to go over budget. It's mm -hmm. probably going to go below budget. Swim fund, if that appropriation has been made and the, the budget will not go up. Town Hall is likely to go over budget probably by um, $1,000 or a little more. Here's where uh, utilities are are oh, higher right. than we budgeted for. Because mm -hmm. of the construction uh, yeah. tools. So our electric bill there is right now running about $300 a month. So right. I think you have know, power tools. That's right. And all that stuff. Yeah. So again, these are not large numbers at all. Insurance, uh, this is, oh, this is, quite this go over so much? So all we have is an insurance, uh, like the health insurance mm -hmm. bill, we are billed on a calendar year, not on a fiscal right. year. Yep. And we're always basically behind by a year. And this budget or this cluster of line items reflects that. So mm -hmm. it's just, it is what it is. We did increase the town hall value uh, right. based on the renovation and we're you know we're going to see an insurance premium that's going to reflect that we i think i believe we also added didn't we add a truck Did we, we added a truck yeah, as well that so um although that would oh, be in the highway yeah, that would be in, in the, on the highway side 
So I think we'll have one more bill for a couple of hundred dollars on the un unemployment end of things. They bill quarterly. So we're, we're pretty much where we're going to be on that cluster of line items. We don't, we don't pay unemployment on the two temporaries, correct? On, yes, we do. We do. Unemployment is applied to all employees, everyone on payroll. Hmm. Okay. It's based on uh, the payroll. So we're at an audit It's a point. percentage. Of yes. Okay. Long-term debt, we're going to be on budget. All of those numbers are just either they have been paid or they will be paid prospectively and they won't change. Tax abatement, we're over by $3,800, but um, Something. we just don't budget for tax abatement. Unless it's looking in the new budget, we don't have a line item for tax abatement, which is impossible to know. Right. Yeah, you wouldn't budget for that. Um, and that line item could go up if there is mm -hmm. a request for tax abatement and it is granted by the board. Social services, uh, that is at budget. It's not going to change. It won't go up. Mm -hmm. Transfers out or, or cemetery appropriations and the um, equipment reserve fund for Woodbury. And they were both special articles on last year's town warning. <clears throat> so overall, at this point in the year, we're up by 2%, mm -hmm. which is... We're basically on target. What are, excuse me, what are transfers out cemetery? What does that mean? Uh, that is a, those are the appropriations that were voted on at town meeting. So that's what last it year. Last year. So that's what it looks like for purposes of auditing in Nimerick. It, they're just called transfers out. So they're transferred out of the general fund to the cemetery uh, fund or to the um, Woodbury the Equipment Reserve Fund. Uh, and if you look uh, at the, if, I you, see. if you look at the, I just saw it, something else that Sandra gave us, I think it's in the beginning of this, it shows the cemetery's budget. Oh, yep. It's, and how much, I can't find it right it's now. It's a little bit deeper in, but you do have yeah. a copy of that, and, and you it will see that. And it shows have, like eight thousand six hundred or something dollars left to spend through the end of June, at which time, depending on whether the budget gets approved at town meeting, which they ask about nine thousand dollars more this year than last, so they they understand that they only have eighty six hundred dollars or so this left month. to spend for Thanks. cemetery maintenance and things through the end of June. Well, I don't know if they understand that, but they certainly have that information. Right. And they probably do understand it. So overall, we're up by about 2% of where we should be at this mm -hmm. time of year. I, I That's think pretty darn good to, for guessing at what numbers might be, mm -hmm. projecting. So if we do go over, it doesn't seem that we will go over by any significant amount, and we could actually hit budget right on target or be under again this year. So again, the, that is only one half of the equation. What you budgeted to spend is only one half of the equation. The big piece here, what we really want to be uh, cognizant of is our delinquent taxes, right. and that is, uh, you know, l leniency is not it is not our best friend. We want to make sure that. Well, we try to strike a balance. I think. Yeah, we yeah. we want to make sure we get as really almost all of it in by the end of the year, as in accordance with your policy. So, uh, by the end of the fiscal year. Right. So the 2018 report, and there's five parcels, the, um, those have all been sent to the town tax attorney. The, um, let me grab them, three have been sent to the tax attorney, number one, number four, number five. She has already sent them collection letters. Okay, so these are with the tax attorney. Are you reading that, please? If you yeah, have this. Oh, it's on here? Yeah, it's on It's, it's, it's uh, steeper in that. It's like about halfway through. Yeah. Oh, there is. Okay. Okay, and then the other two. So, Cole actually has paid, that was the uh, 
uh, estate that was in probate, and let's see, this is the January report. So in February, that was paid in full. So Which this, one? Cole. Yeah, Cole. Number two, I should say. So it's paid in full. Mm hmm Okay. And number three is down to, he makes $75 a month payments, and so he's down to about 30 bucks for 2018. So and we might as well say that. He's, it's done. Paid. Yeah. So 2018 is in great shape. You have the full uh, 2019 report. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. Wait a minute. So this second page of that, it shows that we still have 8496 outstanding in, F1, in FY18? Yes. Ex okay. Gotcha. All right. 2019. So the 2019 report is what taxes are were outstanding as of uh, January 31st, 125,288 dollars. So we're we're gonna close that gap, right? And probably not the first select board meeting after town meeting, but maybe the one after. We'll review that. Um, Sandra worked on a policy for small yep. amounts. 23 cents, 23 cents, you know, money. stuff like that. So we, oh, yeah. she, was, she worked on a policy for that. Jim's taking a look at it, and we can put that on the agenda sometime in March. We, when you take a look at the, the list, there are so many folks who owe a penny or five cents right. or whatever. Every time, and I cannot get the, uh, I cannot select who I want to print. It's. It's either one, it's all or, none. It's all or one. Oh. So ev I've already spent, mm -hmm. you know, we printed pages because I have to keep a, a record, but it's right. at least a, probably a penny right. to print a bill. And the at this point. tax policy is things that are ten dollars or less. There is a statute that Jim felt was sufficient to authorize the board, and I, I will let him speak for himself, but right. he did send me an email that um, he felt a town could, um, mm -hmm. based on that statute, turn into the general fund amounts of $10 or under in overpayments. Right. Now, you do not have to pick that amount, but... Right, but we can talk about that yeah. some other time in March. But I didn't want to wanted to let you guys know that's on the horizon. Anything else, Madam Treasurer? I think our uh, I'm going to pop back now to the balance sheet mm -hmm. and for the period ending January 31st. We're we're in good shape. We have a general fund balance right now for in excess of four hundred and thirty-six dollars. So that is the gen, that is composed of the general fund balance that opened FY twenty plus all the revenues we've received minus all of the expenses we've received. So you can see that I think we're in very good shape. As far as um, the highway grant uh, expenditures that we're going to see by the end of the year, I, it's quite possible that we will not require a note in anticipation of taxes. And that's and the again. Beauty. I, I can't guarantee it, but that is the beauty of having a healthy general fund balance. So. I think that's Great. where we are. I Great. think it looks really good. You uh, get once again have a due to uh, from. Um, mm -hmm. I, I did copy for you the due to from uh, schedule, and it just tells you what each, for instance, what each fund has in it: the technology fund, the record preservation fund. It is a list of. It's in the stuff you printed. The, fun, the funds that are yes, the funds that are in our checking account, but which are not available to use as opt-in. Yes. Yeah, I don't see it, but that's okay. Did I not make a copy of that? Would you like a copy? Would you no. like copies of that? Because no. you received it, all of that in an in email. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. So, any any questions? For um, it's great. This is great. I think we're doing very well. Thank you. It looks you. good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to predict the budget. You never know. No, you don't. So. 
Development notebook mm -hmm. okay. with me. So for those real esoteric questions, that how much is in the technology fund right now? Mm -hmm. I, I, I cannot remember that off the top of my head, why but not? I don't know why not. And I I will have uh, that those numbers available Perfect. because I got caught last year with the highway equipment mm -hmm. fund. How much money is in there? Yep. I took a wild guess. It happened to be right or close to right. But I, I don't want to try to be that lucky again this year. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank Take you. Take care. You too. All right. Who wants to be next? I have town hall next and then town meeting morning. You guys want to go? Well, I think John will be fast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is good because Gus will now know what's going on with town meeting. Did we, Sandra, did we, did we have a large copy? I'd like Gus to have one of these. Spiral bound copies. Uh, uh, let me open the ball. No, we can have one of these because we're not all here. I feel certain that I think you we received one eight or ten. And he should have one. Yeah, he was definitely one. on the list. Next to Gus. <clears throat> it's easier to read. <laughs> and it'll lay flat. Uh, Denise, do you want me to leave this open or closed? I think you can. Uh, leave it open. Yeah. Tell us and check that button again. Yeah, and don't forget you're going to have computer problems in the morning. Something to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. It's odd enough. So I have a computer at home, and it, I'm on the same line as. So I'm interested to see when you get home if you have any symptoms. What? It just blanked off just now. No. Since just we one. got here, it's not, it's just you can connect, but it's not connected to the internet. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, John. Okay, I'm here to talk about the snow at the town hall. Yes. It's kind of a new thing. Um, we haven't used the building in the winter, so we're not really used to what it's like using it in the winter. And uh, and even during the winters when we didn't use it, we didn't heat it. Um, right. The roof's cold. The snow stuck to the rusty corrugated. Now we've got a. Ah a new standing seam, slippery standing seam, and we've got heat, and uh, the snow is coming off. It, uh, it's quite a drop to the ground. It usually doesn't fall off the roof unless it's getting wet and starting to melt a little bit. So when it hits the ground, it turns to ice. I mean, it's a block of ice. So removing it, it's going to be more, a snow blower can't handle removing it. It's, it's too dense for a regular snow blower. Uh, Sandy and I cleared O and N. It builds up at the windows. Yeah, it was not good. And Sandy and I went out there with uh, Maddoxes and shovels and cleared it out and put those pieces of the plywood up. Did that From, help? Mm -hmm. The plywood help? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It would be up over the the right. sill. Yeah. Um, and probably that's part of a long-term solution is some kind of plywood panel that. Maybe it's not a full eight foot high, but it comes up, you know, 36 inches anyway. Um, because right now the, the sill outside is only 24 inches or something. So this is right. going to be an ongoing issue, even if it you is. try to use well, the Well, that's panel. why I'm talking right. to the select board about right. it, because it's right. sort of a new thing. Um, so we've got to come up with a strategy for, uh, for removing it, pretty much. I don't know if there's a strategy for keeping it on the roof. People talk about snow guards and such. Yeah. The standing seam insulation may not allow us to use the kind of clips to simply clamp onto the ribs. Um, there's there's a risk there sometimes that the, an entire pan can come down. Yes. Um, so so I don't know if snow guards are going to do anything but maybe <coughs> they might help things a little bit. Long-term solution is finding a way to remove the snow. Mm -hmm. um, and I could leave my presentation right there, or I could say, oh, I, I can add that I went online and I was 
poking around and said, what's the smallest bobcat kind of thing we could get? Mm -hmm. Bobcat makes a small excavator, and it is small. It's got a blade, it's got a little bucket, and it would probably be the tool to keep the pole, especially on the west side where we can't get anything big mm -hmm. going around the building. We don't plow around that side of the building. Because the septic's there. Yeah. Uh, so we can't bring like the, the main excavator in, but you can... What if... Hmm? Now we're buying a tractor with a... It's two-wheel drive and a loader. Oh. And that might be too big too. We're talking That's about a pretty saying. small flat spot before the grade mm -hmm. drops off after the septics. Um, this little bobcat excavator could be used not only to clear the snow away from the window, but to keep the parking lot trim, mm -hmm. to keep the, uh, it's got a blade so it can do some plowing. And if we had one down there right now, whoever was responsible for running it, it would probably be worthwhile if they came up here right now and started dealing with the snow around yeah, the windows here. Yeah, I saw that, here. right. And uh, so there are two places I can see it used in the winter for snow removal. And then um, talk to the road crew and the operations person about what kind of bobcatty kind of thing could also be used in the summer. That what, what would be what, what? What could they use one for? Yeah, or or if it's the next step up or something, would it then be valuable mm -hmm. for summer use? Or uh, right. if it's too small, is it strictly for snow removal between mm -hmm. the two buildings? So. And that's just my whole... How much is one of those things? As far as I can tell, 20 grand. I've always wanted to drive one of those. Me too. Me and, me and Andy Felice says we'll do the first couple of plows. And <laughs> pro bono. Once you start, you can't stop. Well, you can't eat just one. It looks like so much fun to drive one of those plows. What does Seth Gardner call it? Iron disease, metal yeah, disease. Yeah, I know, I know. Greg I don't have, I don't have that. My husband has that disease. So when you tip it over and it's, it's hang, you're hanging upside down oh. inside of it. It has a roll bar. Yeah, it has yeah. a roll bar. Safe. You just can't get out. Oh, well, that wouldn't be too good. John, are you thinking there still needs to be some kind of wood over the windows? I do. Even with, even if we had something to clear the snow. What? Actually, yeah. the more we use the building, the warmer it gets, the more likely it is that even after a three inch snow, it's going to come sliding right off. Right, um, right. But I was, I was putting some paint on upstairs, and, uh, and it must have been an entire pan let loose at once. The whole building shook. I mean, there's a, a lot of snow that comes off. Mm -hmm. it, uh, you know, and it lands in this one little area that's probably no bigger than two feet in depth, but it, it's a hole of like almost 20 feet. You know, it's like you're getting right. 10 times as much right. snow suddenly dumping in one spot. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, so there's a lot of weight there. So, yeah. so that little entryway, is that going to be enough to protect people from that? It came off before. You no, so I'm that? wondering if someone walk, huh. slams the door and starts walking, is that going to... Hit the yeah, roof, no, or it, it, it does hit the roof. You just have to put an avalanche warning on the door. Yeah. Well, <laughs> don't it's slam the door. No, no, just door. avalanche warning, then your liability uh, issues. Oh, okay. So you wear one of those monitor things? Bring a St. Bernard with you. Yeah, right, there you go. okay. Right. It there came off that side of the building today when I was there. And, and I, Break your neck. I didn't even recognize the noise. It was so loud huh. that I went out, and it uh, did dump right on top of that little roof. Wow. The little roof's still there. I was going to say, did it smash the roof? Well, one time it took the whole, the whole awning right yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I remember an occasion at a town meeting where Boat and Kate had his car parked up and it slid off and put a huge dent in his Oh, no. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> anyway, so there's it's, it's something that's kind of new. We're using the building in the winter. Yeah. And sliding snow is an issue. Yeah, and who would have who would have thought of that yeah. until now, right? Especially uh, it didn't occur board. to me until I saw the snow building up like, you know, eight mm -hmm. inches above the, the sill. So we, we put the plywood up. Right. On the east side, the parking lot side, when the plow comes in to plow the driveway, it can drop its wing mm -hmm. and it can come pretty close to the side of the building and take a lot of that away. Yeah. So the, really where we have the, the highest piles of accumulating snow is on the west side. Yeah. Um, well, we'll have to check into it. Um, if we take out a loan, if it's for more than a year, we have to put it on a, get the voter approval. If it's a loan for a year or less, 
the select board can do it on its own or if it's a used and we don't have to take out you know a loan then the select board can authorize payment. I saw a used one of what the one I'm talking about this they call it an excavator um, but it's a little bobcat with tracks it's got a four foot blade and it's a little little bucket cute little bucket um, 10 grand for one that was uh, 2019 yeah so if you want Greg to do the research, he'd be more than happy to do that's, the research. That's what we need is research and, and see what the road yeah. proves. Sounds awfully cheap. cheap. It, it must be tiny or something. This they are small. tiny. Oh, they're yeah. tiny. <clears throat> and they turn around and they turn around quick. Yeah. Well, this one, this one's got the tracks. So I don't know. I don't know how tiny. That's, so that's kind of what they, they use those in Montpelier on the sidewalks. Oh, it's so one, one of those the tracks, stuff. Huh? No, 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 no. Montpelier doesn't no, no, but it's kind of like the same size, though, right? I think the Montpelier is just a plow blade. Yeah, but it's uh, kind, made, of, made, kind made, of the same size. Still, it, yeah. it sounds too cheap, 10 grand. The thing I'm thinking of is, is the kind of thing a landscape person would have. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. yeah. Greg's got one. Does it? And he had the blade, he had the broom. He used to do all the sidewalks at U32. Then uh, someone wants to look into it. Right. So we have to put sidewalks in first before I can use it. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that, that's my two cents. Okay. Three well, cents. I mean, it's something. It's good to know, so we can think about it before next winter hits. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yes, John. And I love the number things on the panel oh, yeah. um, cupboards, the pew numbers. That there's is a secret the, code. Those, yes. things, there's, that's, those numbers are secret code. It's yeah, just the coolest thing. It's actually not, but he did try to make a secret code. <laughs> so while we're here, do you end what best is for Article 7? Oh, the town, the painting thing. It's it sounds painting. like we didn't maybe ask for enough money. This yeah. quote from Travis Hodgson seems really high. My computer starts smoking. I didn't get out of it quickly. Well, almost 20 almost 20 percent is renting the boom mm -hmm. and materials, but so I, I just don't know what you want to say when you get your articles. Where's the warning? Uh, I did look at up these paints and the markup of this contract, I'm leaving names out of this, mm -hmm. is phenomenal. The the aura paint. Per gallon at Bobachon, it's the exact paint, Benjamin Marbora, exterior white, exterior white, it's $30 a gallon. So I, I, so I went and looked up the list price, it's $69.99, so $70. So I said, let me multiply, let me see what the price would be if I were a private company doing a 15% pass through, which is standard. It came out exactly at eighty dollars. So I think right. I think they're taking the list price and they're full pricing us like an auto mechanic would. And then they're then on top of that they're adding a pass through. So, you know, almost triple the price per gallon times sixty five gallons. It's it's a thirty two hundred dollar difference in markup just on the aura paint and I didn't even calculate the markup on the... Well, you'll be going out to bid. I mean, this is just to get an idea. Yeah, so, this, uh, so, so I, I think they can, feel about that Arkansas. number can be yeah. knocked down a little bit. Well, if they at least give us a 30, it's a place we can start at. And then we'd have to see if the select board would authorize money out of the town hall reserve fund if a bid goes over the 30,000. That's the only thing I can think to do, unless somebody wants to move from the floor to increase this amount. Right. Unless we could, we seriously, it's not a joke, uh, if we, unless we could do part of the building one year and the other part the next year, half. But then if you're renting a boom, you have to rent right. it twice. Right. 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 That's a good point. So the old, the old, they did the Old West Church, which was $37,360. How, how many weeks did they do that in? Do you they know? were really fast. Yeah, because they had the boom they wanted to Very fast and thorough, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so they and they're known for doing historic buildings, so I hope that mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the only, I mean, there's, like I said, there's a couple options. There's let this go through the way it is. We do have money, and be putting money in the town hall reserve fund, but I don't know if it will be enough. Or to have somebody from the, the floor of the town hall could fundraise. Yep. I'm not on that committee. <laughs> <laughs> Neither is John. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, so there's a couple of there's a couple of options. Yeah. You know? Okay, so if you're just coming, it would be 
Yeah, I'm leaving at 30000 and Yeah, and like I said, unless somebody wants so, to... Yeah, and maybe we'll go out to bid and something will come in lower. And, yeah. So is there more square footage on that town hall than the Old West Church? I think the Old West Church is bigger. I thought so. Yeah, but it, there's no porches or stairs or ceiling. It's just one big block. Oh, this is interior and exterior? No, I'll, the exterior of the Old West Church. But you have yeah. the ceilings underneath the porches. Yeah, I mean, like the front what, porch. The, the town hall has town hall. more. What porch? Like square footage. It's, right. it's, it's got, got the a porch on the back. The front it's porch runs oh, there. Yeah. The front, you know. And the Old West Church, on the other hand, has a very tall cupola. Yeah. Yeah. This doesn't. Yeah. yeah. And he and he is the same guy, right? Yeah. yeah. I looked up that contractor online, and there's a photo of the Old West Church being painted. Or, multiple ladders on one side with yeah. all people on the ladder. Yeah, oh, I know. And okay. a boom truck. Mm -hmm. The question I had, do they spray it or do they do it? No, yeah, they do not spray it. <laughs> Have you seen John? John's, John's giving me the look. What? They spray the South Woodbury Church. It was all over the windows. Yeah, so, so there's a there's a technique. And I and so I looked at that photo and I was actually talking to Denise about that on the yeah. phone. A friend of mine is a professional contractor and he said, there are two ways to do it. If you want to make lots of money on time and material, I'm not criticizing them, I'm just saying this is what he told me years ago. A lot of contractors, they take the can and they dip the brush, they wipe the brush, and they apply like you would do your house or your kitchen cabinets. And then there's the guys who want to get it done, and it, it's the same quality paint job. They have one of those power sprayers. They spray in front of them and then they brush it in. Mm -hmm. So you're not, it saves the time of dipping. Yeah. You're still brushing it in, but the application, it, he says it's so much faster, 50% faster. Mm -hmm. So there may be ways to get that price down if, that, if that's mostly labor and they're doing it, mm -hmm. you know, 1850s approach, there might be a way to reduce that if we get a different contract. All right. Um, are we else on town hall? Um, I called accessibility solutions or systems, whatever the name is, Bob Weber, yeah, uh -huh. to lift in, told I, him to uh, schedule an inspection. I thought he was already supposed to do that. Well, I copied you when I when I saw Right, him. but yeah, that's why he, 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 he hasn't responded. Yeah. Oh, okay. But, uh, <laughs> and Dan Cowan, the electrician, said he would be there in uh, February. So well, he's got a few days he's left. Got, he's got four days left to do about four days of work. Mm -hmm. So it might take that long to put not only all the light fixtures, which are there on site, mm -hmm. but all the smoke and the fire oh, alarms, yeah. get the fire alarm system going, all that stuff. Right. Um, exit lighting, all that. Uh, and then Lisa Ryan was supposed to come, right? She did. She did, okay. Did she, she, did. she must have been very happy. Yeah, she was. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the heat exchanger? Hmm? What about the heat exchanger? Did you mention? You mean the air thing that's, that's happening? The air, air okay. heat exchanger. Well, we talked about. We're going to worry about that after we get our certificate. There's, there's a portion of that install yeah. that really can't happen until yeah. the weather gets better. Okay. But it has been fine. Something oh, about a bunch of pipes. Oh. We talk, something about a bunch of pipes. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah just just ducting. 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 Yeah, the ducting's there, but. Oh, okay. Yeah. If, if we hung the air exchanger where, where we intend to hang it, we could easily plug into the building. We've got the lines, the, the pickups from out of the bathrooms and the discharge goes into the main room. But then we have to exhaust the stale air to the outside That's bring right. in air from the outside. So we got to bring two eight-inch ducts in from outside. Well, I think after we get the certificate of occupancy, we need to have a discussion about what are the next steps and what does it cost. Mm -hmm. Right. When are we likely to get the certificate of occupancy? Well, that's why we have, we have to have well, Dan Cowan. Well, let's say we got an uh, elevator inspected and Dan Cowan wrapped his work up today. We could probably we could probably think about calling Labor and Industry or Department of Public Safety uh, sometime in the next two or three weeks. Yeah, I mean, people have asked me, when is it going to be usable? And I said, well, we're waiting on the electrician. I yeah. said, we can't do it until we have our certificate of occupancy. Yeah. Kitchen and that might not might... be totally done, but that won't that affect the certificate of occupancy. Okay. But uh, as far as uh, the code issues, um, there are just a couple of doors left to do, mm -hmm. and uh, and the uh, cable rail to put on the front steps. Yeah, Don has such a nice update. That's about it. That's about it. The code. Uh, and now, now that Lisa's come, can we get the grant money? She wants to Not see. Sure she wants to see. Um, 
it was interesting because she talked about a lot of things that actually the Arts Council didn't necessarily fund. But she is the ADA person mm -hmm. for the Arts Council. Oh. So she wants to see signs at the elevators, um, the panic hardware on the big historic door, which came but came the wrong size. Mm -hmm. There was a third thing. What was the third thing? I don't know. I read your memo. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some other little thing. Signage, which has to be a certain mm -hmm. height, and yeah. raised lettering, and braille. Mm -hmm. So you can braille your way around and find the right bathroom. Yeah. Oh, I know. She wants toilet paper holders in the um, oh, yeah, ADA the bathroom. Toilet paper, toilet paper what? So, toilet paper holder. No, toilet paper holders, the hand, paper, hand yeah, towel, the ADA bathroom. dispenser, yeah. and all the bathrooms. So that they're accessible from a wheelchair. Like yeah. the same thing yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. What it's come down to is I've got a punch list of a lot of little jobs that take no more than an hour, hour and a half each. Yeah, now, is, yeah. is Andy still able to help you fill in the you No, know, I mean, well, he wanders by. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, he likes uh, specific projects. Do this, do that kind of thing. Well, he he did the, he cased the windows, and he probably saw the bill for that. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think it's good. <laughs> I, I think it's good. Um, the we're going to plan a party. Can't go ahead and show <laughs> we're planning a party, are we? Mm -hmm. Party? Party? Yeah, there's going to be a couple of parties. <laughs> <laughs> At least, right? So, John, uh, um, as I was mentioning to you today, uh, when we talked, the uh, Friends of group is imagining doing a grand reopening yeah. celebration that will also hopefully serve as something of a fundraiser. And their time frame that they're thinking to do this in would be mid to late May. Would it be safe for them to schedule something at this point? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And whatever the grand opening is, John, I want to be very actively involved because we know all the people who really to thank. And, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. and also, um, I think John has an idea of maybe doing a soft yeah. grand yeah. <laughs> opening prior to this. Other one, so a, a soft brand opening, okay. Inaugurations, Christmas by invitation only. Right. By invitation. And, I, and I've actually kept a list of people that I wanted to send a postcard to to make sure that they know about you. Can we get some post? We should get some postcards. Yeah, we should get postcards with yeah. a, a picture of the town hall. Yeah. That'd be great. We'll keep you on the um, CC list for this. Oh, yeah, I read your notes. Yep. Thank you. Am I on that list? I think so. Okay. Um, I, think are, oh, yeah. I usually afford them. Yeah. Barbara hasn't done them for this go round, so. Thank you guys. I'll see you at town meeting. Yes, yep. you will. Okay. John, send me an email about specking out a bobcat. I will. Greg will love to do it. I will. <laughs> oh, good. All right, the trickiest part will be knowing exactly how big the flat area is between the side of the building and the septic. So he might have to go do a site visit, right? Because it's six feet and almost anything will fit. Anything but equipment. It's exactly four feet and we're looking at. He'll it. take care of it for you. So you, the tank's not, it's a concrete tank, isn't it? Yeah. Whether they're risers or something that get in the there way. There is, the, one of the, the septic tank has plastic covers on it, so you can't drive uh, that. The, uh, the big pump tank has, has a tall riser. So there are there are height thing, plus the grade drops away right after the tanks. The grade drops yeah. away dramatically. So there's a little bit of a pitch away from the building, a flat, and then again. Okay. And I don't know if that flat is six feet wide or four feet wide. But that'll make a difference. I'll let oh. you know. Okay. Good. Good. Thank, Thank you, you again so very Good much. Night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. You didn't expect us to be on time, did you? Uh, no. <laughs> Have you had supper? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I had some meat, so. All right, so let's go through the morning. There's not a lot of, I don't think there's a lot of really controversial stuff. Pretty straightforward. Um, year, so I, what'll help me mostly is if you know who wants to move particular mm -hmm. articles, and maybe you don't. Um, I know that Craig Line usually wants to move the Kellogg Hubbard, and right. I assume Wilson will move the, the appropriations. Um, the, When's uh, Craig getting done? The Kellogg Hubbard? Yeah. The... Really? We have one, we have just one rep there and we have two. I think Craig is still is Craig still the rep, isn't he? Yeah, mm -hmm. we only have yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Alright, let's start from the beginning. Article one. I'll move to nominate Gus. Um and then you kind of just leave. I'll deal with article two. You'll do two. 
and the incumbent. Do we know on Article 3 if all the incumbents want to be reelected? Do we? I gotta, oh, I'll have to check that out because I gotta look and see who's, who's up. I'll take care of looking into that. I think it's Tina, Rob, Buck, and Randy. Is it Randy? I'm, I'm reading the report. Yeah, well, it's all, yeah, because it's Tina. That's an every year thing, but I'll double check on the other two. Okay. I think you're right. Um, Article 4, um, I can move that, and that will probably raise some questions, which we can all yep. help okay. answer. Okay, um, Cemetery Commission article. I guess they'll have to speak to that themselves. Okay. The Cemetery Commission, they'll be there. Okay, who's the chair now? John Zemanskis. But hopefully Jennifer will be there, and yeah. Fletcher. Jennifer Whitman. Fletcher Dean. So I guess I should let them know that they're going to have to talk about the cemetery stuff. Okay. All right, Article um, 6. Cliff, do you want to do that one about the server? Sure. Um, town Hall. I don't mind doing that one, and hopefully, you know, Donna and John will be there to talk about it. Okay. Wood chipper. I think John. I can do that. I was mentioned on VPR today, Gus. Yeah. <laughs> crazy? That is so funny. On this issue? They, or well, they, they mentioned over $250 million will be expended at town meeting this year across and the they, state. And they picked you. $180 million on a school. In Burlington. In South Burlington. I couldn't believe it. And that's the only, probably the only reason I was really paying attention. And um, then they said it, it ranges from 180 million for a school, new school in South Burlington, to 25,000 for a used wood chipper in Calais. <laughs> <laughs> Big potatoes, small potatoes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, our, our, and I can call Wilson. Do you know if they're going to move to alter the ward article? I don't think so. Okay. I haven't heard that they are. Um, the delinquent tax stuff, that's kind of the same old, same old. I don't know that anybody will have any problem yeah. with that. Yeah, no, I think usually somebody yeah. will deal with all, yeah. somebody moves all those articles. And does Stephanie want to do Article 17? Yeah, I think I'm sure she's supposed to be still here. So I will ask her to be available to talk about 17. Um, and then the other thing I think we told you about the resolution, the gun control, the gun yeah. resolution. Did that Tristan ever contact you? No. Okay. Uh, did I give you a copy of it? The no. Gun? No, you I, just mentioned it. I think I've it. actually brought it tonight to give to you if I didn't forget it. But that's likely to come to the floor. I think I'm not positive, but. Um, mm -hmm. Good, staying pretty active, so I would suspect he'll be there. You what? The group's been pretty active in a lot of towns, Has so it? I suspect he'll have a good chance he'll bring it up. Oh, okay. Um, I brought it so that I could give it to you. And the other thing, I can't, I don't know if anything will come of this, that cannabis. Um, here's the, can you pass that down to us? That's the resolution that we were given that night. So that may come up. And like I said, he was a very well-spoken, very well-mannered, respectful young man. And have you heard anything about questions people might have? I try to put together, I'm going to work on a list of things that might come up that we want to have answers for. Have you heard anything? I have not, you know, no store in East Calais, so there's a little it's harder to get gossip. Uh, <laughs> we're working on that problem. Yeah. You know? yeah, I've heard. You heard we're working on that? Okay, I've good. Heard that. So, anyway, I, I have not heard much, like, you know, I, yeah. in the way of, but it also doesn't look like a controversial. Now, warning, Doug Lilly hasn't called me yet. We will be at town meeting this week. We understand he's supposed to be there. He's awake. 
Um, and there is going to be just like from 9 to 9.30 a school informational thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be some tables set up with information. Um, Friends of the town hall, I think are setting up, or town hall are setting up a table. East Cowles Community Trust is setting up a table. Um, so there'll probably be, and I think there's going to be Girl Scout cookies again like there was last year. We're trying to get those set up, not inside where people check in to vote and all that, because you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to do surveys for one, mm -hmm. anywhere in the voting area. Um, lunch is by friends of the town hall. Yep. Barbara Butler's already contacted everybody. Um, I don't know, can you think of anything else? I think, like I said, I think it's a pretty quiet year, but mm -hmm. maybe we'll be surprised and somebody will show up and make noise. Yeah, you never know. And there's something else going on, but I can't say what it is right now, and I'll have to call you. Okay. Surprise. And, I, and if somebody calls me with some big question, I'll let you know what it yeah. is. Um, what was I going to ask? Did you get, this is not have nothing to do with Calus stuff, but did you get my email about Twin Valley Senior Center? I sent you an email. No. From my account there, I don't. I have three different it. emails. I don't remember seeing it. Okay, I'll send it again. I send it to you at work. Okay. Um, I can't think of anything else. But thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any advice we can give you? Yes. I'm open to any good? advice. You're good. Okay. Thanks, Gus. Thank, thank you, Gus. Thanks, Gus. Thanks, Gus. See you Tuesday. Is it working now? Yeah. Huh. Wow. That's odd. I am not. You are too. <laughs> Thank you guys for taking care of some so this is, all of us. So this is what I wanted to Speaking of reading, call you about you're going to be on because it's kind of... Oh yeah, yeah. This is going to happen. I almost forgot that. How would you feel comes? We've driven our own way. <laughs> and I'm not oh, yeah. decided yet. I'm going to talk to the board tonight, so I'm just making a copy of that. You can just a little reality check. And, but I'll pull you know, out of this. Yeah, I want to just make a copy because I want the board to go over it because we might want to make a few changes. You think you have to come on the stuff these days? So the one thing we should know about that is that there's a guy who writes those for the legislature. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 He does a good job. I know. He was eight Yeah, he's the one I've been talking about. So, yeah, there's some more. Yeah, something down. Yeah. Toby's got a lot of nice photos I'm looking at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Toby did a lot of the photos. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Gus? Let us know. Okay. And if we hear anything, I'll give you a shout. Okay, see you next week. What's your, um, what's your phone number at work? 828-3251. Um, 3251. I know that you have hate that field. Have you? It's Stan Morse's, the field oh. north of his barn. What, oh, what page is it? Uh, on page 65. It's really nice when you're raking or whatever you're doing and mowing it get to look that beautiful thing. Aww, mm -hmm. it makes me miss him. Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, me too. It's got that little feeling for a second there. Yeah. Okay. Good you night. Guys. Thank, Thank you, Gus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the warning is on page the Rose is looking for it. I don't see any page numbers. Do you have page numbers? No. The maple oh, leaves in the corner. The painting. That's awesome. Oh, here it is. Six. Is Diane Fitch going to come to town meeting? Yes. She is? Yeah. Not good. Oh, Diane. Diane. Yeah. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Where is she? Um, if you guys think of questions that you think we might get asked mm -hmm. so I can put them on a list and have a possible answer like we did last year, um, let me know. And I'll contact these other committees and all that stuff. And then the budget starts on page 43. So I'm, I'm going to go through and 
review it again before town meeting. I think we're in good, I think we're in good shape. You guys feel like you're in good shape? Yeah, I mean, like what Gus said, it seems kind of like a, I don't want to use the word easy, but smooth sailing. And, yeah. Um, That's what it seems like. I think the usual things are going to, you know, they'll talk about the roads and... Oh, good, thank you. Maybe. Well, and people I think, might talk about the road commissioner's leave of absence. Right, and we can just, and I yeah. think the answer to that yeah. is that the select board approved his leave, mm -hmm. and it's a personnel matter. We can't discuss it, period. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. Well, it's true. Yep. And, um, and people might bring up, you know, their dissatisfaction with the roads. So I think we can, I'll put together a little blurb of where we're at with that study with UVM. You mm -hmm. guys all got that email yeah. about what's going on with that. Um, you heard anything, Katie? No. Well, like I said, if you hear of anything or if you think of something yeah, yeah. that you think might come up, let me know and I'll put it on our list. Um, I guess that's kind of it on town meeting stuff. Do you have anything you can think of for town meeting? No, it's, um, there may be questions about the, the painting and the server, but mm -hmm. those are things that just have to happen. I think if there's any objections to the server... Um, they want to shut down town government. Well, I mean, other members of the office staff are going to... Uh, be there. Be seen their opinions <laughs> on the subject. So. Oh, and in this month, in this day and age, I'm sorry, but you just got to yeah, have Yeah, I stuff. mean, and that, I mean, we might get a lot of pushback about that because, you know. Well, we, we, we have to spend the money either way. So, right. Right, do we want to spend it all in one year or do we want to take out a month so we can right. minimize the right. impact right. over time? Right. right. And then what we're doing is the corrective action is we will have a more informed figure mm -hmm. for our tech fund every year because we will be meeting with our newly anointed IT service provider right. on an annual basis to do this gap analysis. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then next time we won't have to take that one. We'll already have them. Right. right. Well we're kinda of, we're kinda of learning as we go, mm -hmm. you know, to have these it's, funds yeah. and it's a new think one. ahead and yeah. you know we're doing all right, next up, if, you're, if everybody's okay with moving on, we have liquor licenses for Maple Corner Community Store and the Whammy Bar and Adamac Co op. These are just renewals. These are just renewals. So, this is which one is this? This must be Maple Corner Community Center. No, this is Adamac Co op. And they've provided their check. They have one for Department of Liquor and one goes to the town, $70 each. And they are asking um, for renewal of their liquor license. And this is, this is only to sell liquor, they don't serve it. So is there a motion to approve the um, Reauthorization of the liquor license for Adamac Community Co-op. So moved. Second. Okay, is there any discussion or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, I'll send this around. And that's only for wine and beer, just to be clear. Right, yeah, they don't sell hard liquor there. Yes. Um, we don't have a board of commissioners. And the town has, and then Judy has to sign it. Okay, so there's Adamac Co op. Maple Corner is a little different because they do serve hard liquor at the Whammy Bar. Correct? Mm -hmm. So this is the liquor license for the store. Remember, we just barely did this, but it has to no, come up for a renewal. No. This is the time of year they renew. And this is the liquor license for the whammy. I think we can double check and see if there's two places we're supposed to sign. One. No. 
is this one here. It says Maple Corner Community Store. And this is the 2020 liquor license renewal. Oh, this is oh, this is tobacco from Maple Corner Store. I wonder why Judy said it was landing. Oh, okay, I see. So there's liquor renewal license for the store. There's um, cigarettes for the store. Right, this is tobacco for the store. And then there is the whammy. So it's three different things. The whammy bar. The whammy bar. The store. The store and tobacco store. Mm -hmm. And they've got their checks here for the state and for the town. So would somebody like to make a motion to approve all three renewals? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, any questions? No changes, it's straight renewal. Yeah, straight renewal. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Crisscross them so you know which one you're doing. This is this is the whammy. Laura Philbeck did just such a beautiful job. Doesn't she job do? On this. She does an amazing job. We're very lucky that she's still doing it for us. She looks like in another in this state. Out, this. Which one is that? Us liquor. Yeah, community store. This is the restaurant, I think, if you look down below, right? Restaurant? Restaurant, yep. And this one is tobacco, but I don't see a place to sign. Maybe we don't have to, if I remember right, maybe we don't have to sign the probably. tobacco one now. It's just the yeah, prob but anyway. probably liquor and tobacco. They're both for the store, yeah. so it's just one. But either way, we've approved them. Can you hand me a paper clip? Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, and this is the store. No, I only signed one so far. Alright. Alright, local hazard mitigation planning team. I've done some more research into that and they're talking about six to seven meetings over the course of like the next maybe through the through the fall kind of and this is for you know we have a local hazard mitigation plan right now but you have to update it like every five years um i'm willing to sit on that i talked to katie's husband brian and he's going to talk to katie and see whether it's okay if he sits on that Plus, he has to check with his work. Um, I've talked to planning to see if they can appoint somebody. And I was also going to check with um, Nick Emlin, who's helped us with our local emergency operation plan. <coughs> Good idea. So they're looking at like maybe five people. Can you guys think of anybody else? I would recommend the uh, highway person. Here. Oh, yeah, I'm going to ask Toby. Okay. Ask Toby. And they schedule the meetings, they do the agendas, so you just got to show up. Mm -hmm. So, is everybody good with that? Yeah, sounds good. Did you list all those people in your minutes, oh, please? Yes. Um, anybody have any other thoughts on that or concerns, questions? Mm -hmm. no? Okay, you want to do an IT update? Guess what? 
We don't have any internet. Yeah, uh, no internet. <laughs> we were done. The uh, school, I'm sorry, the uh, directors of the Maple Corner Board neglected to ch check some boxes here. Which one is that? Is that Maple Corner or is so that they, Before they turn us in, we need to Maple Corner. Oh, let's have a, let's have a sticky. Do they have to fill that in? They ask them if they've ever, like, Has any axe murdered anybody or offenses, criminal offenses. Because they filled it in. They did it here. I was going to say, on they did it line. on another one. Right, I saw that. So they're going to have to check those boxes. Those. Mm -hmm. I server replacement when that time comes. And um, more good feedback from the office staff on some recent issues that came up and yeah. dealt with expediently and to everyone's ultimate satisfaction. Good. Yes, Holland was right on it. And if you go in and look at what's in there, one thing I'm really happy to see is that everything is clearly labeled. Yay. That's been a while coming. Where's the Wi-Fi box in here? And it's the little white disc on the top shelf underneath. Oh, that is. That yeah. desk. Well, they have one with antenna on it, don't they? Those antennas work better than that. Yeah. Mm, it actually is evolving because now there's a whole new thing that does away with antennas completely. Really? And uh, covers a greater area. Uh. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty soon, you know, you'll have a three-story house, basement, main floor, and top, and you'll just need one device to connect from any room in the house. Yes, yeah, Wi-Fi. Huh? Pretty soon we can glow in the dark. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's what I'm worried about. Well, unplug this and replug it in. I already did. Oh, still doesn't work. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. That's weird. I know. Okay. Could they, um, they break those boxes? Well, you can connect to it. It just is not connected to the internet. All right. So, yeah. uh, so it's not anything in here. Probably it's something out there. Probably. Um, I mean, I, if I had time, I could do some troubleshooting and make sure that that's the case. But that would be my guess. Yeah. Hmm. We get online with them on the telephone. They're twenty-four-seven. It's awesome service, mm. I gotta say. It's a 1 800 number. Any questions on IT? No, friends. Friends. Friends are um, moving right along. It's too bad we don't have the connection because I had some cool stuff to show you. Town Hall. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a um, website under construction, a Facebook page under construction. There is, um, I can email the you links to everybody. Link, right? And it looks like there's a uh, logo that's uh, going to be approved. It's pretty slick looking. Yeah. Cool. Um, Bob Hannon doing it for us at a nice. discount. Um, and looking at doing this uh, grand reopening slash fundraiser. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it would be mm -hmm. mid to late May. Probably, we're looking at possibly that arts weekend doing a Sunday afternoon thing mm. into nice. the evening. Um, they would, the question that has come up is, you know, it takes money to raise money, so to set up this event, um, they're hoping that the select board would be willing to uh, help fund that. Um, hard to get a definitive figure right now, but uh, we thought probably a thousand dollars would be sufficient seed to uh, get that event uh, fully funded and in gear. Once we have a better idea of what it's going to be, that figure comes more defined. But in rough numbers, that's probably the top end, a thousand dollars. Other than that, the uh, 
the most recent activities are getting ready for uh, the town meeting, having a table there. And there will be options for people to join the Friends of, and the special offer of sign up now and you get it free for the first year. <laughs> um, and that allows us to build up a mailing list of potential uh -huh. supporters. Yeah. And there will be uh, a takeaway, um, simple strip, you know, just some important information and facts for people to be aware of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Live and in person. I hope you haven't all been waiting for me. Yeah. No, we're no. catching up on stuff. You can, you can listen. We're all really fast. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And that's pretty much it for friends. Any questions there? No. No, it sounds like fun. Yeah, the one part you missed is that the friends will be coming to the select board with regards to this grand reopening and hoping that the select board will be willing to shake loose some money. We haven't fully defined what that grand reopening is going to look like. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to help. We'll definitely be looking for volunteers, and um, we're thinking a budget of somewhere around a thousand dollars is probably going to be sufficient. Mm -hmm. But once we have a better idea of what the event is actually going to consist of, yeah. we can better define that number. I would have wanted to be on the friends of committee, but I already got too many. Yeah, the friends committees. Don't you think? You think so? I'd like five. <laughs> well, there is an alternative that came up, uh, as it often does when David is around the, the uh, ongoing discussion regarding the chandeliers. So it's been proposed that David started Friends of the Town Hall chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said when we started this whole town hall renovation, right. thing, he was going to take care of the chandelier, yeah, remember? He's taking care of it. He is. Is he getting it professionally cleaned? Is that what that means? Uh, right now, the first step is getting a matching set of globes, which has turned out to be much more difficult than originally imagined. Well, you got to find out a diameter base or something. Or? Yeah, and getting correct. Um, Nancy and Artie, exactly. Correctly. Nancy and Artie have been scouring the state looking for, mm. you know, anything from, the, be it from the the restore uh, mm -hmm. place or swap meets or online Craigslist anything they haven't been able to find anything so David is now going to tap into some of his uh, historical supplier sources mm -hmm. oh. he's pretty sure oh, so he doesn't want to get reproductions he wants to get original he'll go reproductions if that's the only route that's yeah, available but first he wants to rule out all possibilities of uh -huh. getting genuine articles mm -hmm. because didn't he say before it was electrified wasn't it and so yeah. that would have been, you know, obviously thicker glass and um, hmm. there are some on there that have some etching, some that don't. So Any originals on there? We think that there are at least a couple yeah. of originals uh, nice. on there. Nice. Yeah. You can tell by the glass, right? Because right. it will yeah. be like oh. wavy or smoky. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how that fixture means so much to so many people mm -hmm. you know for all the years that we've had town meeting mm -hmm. there some people want to get rid of it they don't like it really mm -hmm. oh i feel attached to it so doesn't david i never wanted to sit under it i was afraid no, me it's either. gonna come down <laughs> well it, it's been raised uh it's a little bit higher in the room so that uh, john mccullough doesn't bump his head on it anymore oh good yeah and uh yeah it, it's a little more secure i think too Jim would bump his head on it too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can see a picture up on the shelf there of John standing underneath it with oh, yeah. plenty of clearance. Yeah, oh, now. That's yeah. a new picture? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was, that was after it was on, raised. After the building had been raised and the foundation put under. Oh. Nice. All right. Thank you. A couple other things. I sent you folks all of the stuff that UVM. Sent remember I followed up with yeah. them to see where they were at. Toby's provided them with the maps. Um, there was an email I didn't get a chance to look at before. We came tonight from Gregory responding to stuff that Toby sent. Mm -hmm. So um, they're you know they're making progress. So I think you know stuff about roads. I think probably could come up at town meeting. I think we can just do a quick blurb about mm -hmm. you know we're working on it. We've mm -hmm. got. You know, these engineering students mm -hmm. involved. Um, it's the thing about 
being able to monitor where the trucks are plowed so people can plan their trips. That's on the, on the books of things to do. So I think we're making progress. And I think, and I want the select board to be really proud of all of the stuff that we have worked on this year from roads to unions to budgets to you name it. I mean, if you look at some of the highlights, the town hall, you guys are awesome. You're just you're awesome. You know, I can't say enough good things about how hard everybody works, how much everybody knows, you know, what they're, what's going on. So I just wanted, from, from me to you, I really appreciate everything that you guys all do and the dedication that you have. Thank we you. We couldn't do it without you. Exactly. Thank you. And thank you also for doing such a detailed iteration of all of those highlights in the <laughs> select board report. You can tell somebody really went back and looked at all mm -hmm. the minutes. Well, thanks to Katie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Um, town meeting prep, we kind of already did that. Um, office update, a couple things. The member, I don't know if it was last time or the last time I was in the office, I can't remember, but Steeplechase has submitted the final plan for the inner office proposed redesign. Um, I asked Judy today, and they're not going to have a chance to look at it until after town meeting. They're swamped. Okay. Um, the other good news is um, you remember that back maybe a year or more ago, I was doing a lot more work, meeting with the staff a lot. And you authorized me to be paid $500 a month. Came up a couple times on the agenda. I think at this point, I haven't taken any pay since November, based on something that was read into the minutes several months ago. Um, really? So at this point, I've checked in with the staff. It's they're they're amazing. They've got things under control. You know, I still am involved but I don't feel the need to be paid. So I would like the, and, and then, you know, Cliff's jumped in when we had all this IT stuff with it. So it, it, I think every, don't you feel like everything's in really good shape? Yeah, we met with the office staff and they said there was definitely a period of transition where you know, they were really glad we were here, but now they feel that they've gotten over the hump on that and things are running smoothly and they have no problem raising a flag if they need us to right. step in and you know right. help address something and and you know and that's what they do i'll get an email at home and you know hmm. call somebody or suggest this or that wow. so i think i think i mean just the addition of barbara's two hours i think mm -hmm. has really helped sandra and that's a that's wow. a really bargain price to get that help yeah so i would like the board to since you all voted to pay me i would like you to vote to now not pay me choose not to take pay. Okay, well, I mean, like I said, I haven't taken anything since November. Just, so. I'd rather see it out there in case things change. Okay. Um, so you can just opt not to take pay and just inform Sandra of that. That's what I propose. Okay, I can do that. But I just wanted you to know, things have smoothed out. You know, we've got a really awesome office staff. You know, they're very dedicated. They know their jobs at this point. And like I said, with the addition of Barbara, you know, that's really helped Sandra a lot. You haven't heard Sandra saying anything yeah. lately. So I think it's, it's really good. Mm. It's good. Yeah, it is very good. So I had a question, um, if anybody might bring this up also at town meeting about a town administrator or select board assistant or something. So do you feel that right now we are doing well? And, you know, I hear what you're saying, and I just wanted to... No, mm -hmm. I think we're good. Katie yeah. has done more than what she was doing, which is so really I, helpful. Yeah, so if anybody at town meeting says, well, you know, we had this charter and we're going to, you know, do this and that, mm -hmm. and, you know, so now you don't even have a select board administrator or something, mm -hmm. you know, the way we've restructured. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think the office staff is comfortable with the way mm -hmm. things are working. They're comfortable talking mm -hmm. to me and asking Cliff for yes. mm -hmm. IT stuff and, and coming to the board. Mm -hmm. They're very comfortable coming to the board, as Judy does, Yeah, which yeah. is great. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, at this point in our development, you know, development yeah. yeah, we don't yeah. feel like we need to hire another person. The people that we have are expert right. in town right. running callous. And you remember we tried that, and it was 
were right. not helpful. It was actually more work than it was right. involved. It didn't work out. Right. Yeah. And I think Cal's is a different community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, and it works for some communities and it doesn't work. Like Woodbury, for instance, they don't have a town administrator no. or administrator, yeah. you know. Right. So I think you have to do it based on what you know about your town and mm-hmm. how it works and the people in it. People don't, what I found, people didn't want to talk to a non-resident mm-hmm. town administrator. Mm-hmm. They wanted to talk to people on the board. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Double and, and we're yeah. because we're accessible. We're a good yeah. board. We're, yeah. We respond to the public. Yeah. So I think, you know, because we're so good, well, and you and know, accessible that people, that's who they want to do with. Builds our sense of community that we're all from here. And we have a vested interest. Mm-hmm. We care about the community. We, we, you know, want to be fiscally responsible, but right. you know, we want to take care of everybody. Right, and because I asked the other staff, that you feel like you're doing work that you shouldn't have to do because remember we had that issue right. yeah. mm-hmm. and they're all fine oh. and they're all good so yay yay for counts okay, okay. Yeah. good um and we can't do minutes because we can't get anything up on the internet but we're going to go into executive session to discuss some personnel matters and per one vsa 313A3 and matters. legal matters, oh, one BSA, mm-hmm. 313A1E. Okay. And Katie, it's on the bottom of the agenda, so you can Thank just you. copy it from there. And at 845. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Katie, are you mm-hmm. gonna you're gonna be taking minutes at town meeting? Yep. Okay. Yes. So what time would you like me to arrive? I don't, we might maybe like nine. nine. Mm-hmm. nine. I don't know if anybody's going to take notes from this. There's a pre-meeting, school meeting? Yeah, there's going to there's be a half an hour. And that's why I don't feel compelled that we need to go to the one on Monday night, yeah, which is at U32. I and I have another, I have a plan for us for that night. Yeah. <laughs> so would somebody like to, so that minutes. was a motion to go into executive session for those reasons. Would somebody like to second it? Yes. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye.